So Katie McCabe, is it all sinking in now? We had the brilliant show last night where you got to be there with your friends, family, the whole squad sinking in. We're going to a World Cup. Yeah, look, I guess the last two weeks has been crazy. Um, you know, we've obviously had the Zambia game and the uncertainties of who's going to be selected and who's not. So I think now the fact we have a lot of clarity on who's going um, is yeah, it's so exciting. And even the event last night um, through Sky and off the ball was, was fantastic. And kind of share those moments with family is, was really special. And when you look back in your career, has there been a moment yet where you've been able to sit and sort of say, whoa, what I, look what I've achieved? Like, I spoke to Neve there and she said the other day she just tapped herself on the back and just said, really? like, well done, like, all your hard work and, and look where you got to. Have you had a moment like that? I don't think I have, to be fair. Um, the, the schedule with even club is just, like, it's just so full on and you're kind of just plugging away and going game by game and... Maybe post World Cup, I'll, I'll have a I'll have a moment when I go away and, and kind of switch off to prepare before I prepare for another season. Um, so yeah, to kind of reflect and, and look back on it. Right now, I'm just kind of trying to enjoy every moment um, of being here. I'm so grateful to be here to be have a, a seat on a plane to our first ever major tournament. It's honestly so special. Yeah, when you look back at the journey you've had from from starting out all those years ago. What comes to your mind, I suppose? Is there any trainer or a coach that comes to mind to sort of influence your career? Yeah, look, there's every single one of them, to be honest. Every, every single one of them helped me so much in, in so many ways, whether that was my dad couldn't drop me to train and the coach would pick me up and make sure I was a training or a game. And, um, yeah, my dad trying to balance having 10 other kids and, and trying <laughs> to get me to my matches on a weekend, you know. Um, yeah, look, people have sacrificed so much in order for me to get here and... I'm very incredibly proud of that and I'll be holding them with me when I'm going there to, to perform and, and to, to represent the, the country. Yeah, I got to meet some of your family last night. Yeah. They're very, very proud. <laughs> They're gas. They're gas. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so proud. Like when I went up to them and they wanted to ask questions, they didn't know what to ask. And they said, if we ask who's our biggest inspiration in the family, she's just going to say Lauren. She yeah, Lauren. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, with Lauren, um, I'm obviously, I'm, I'm so happy with how focused she is and, and wanting to, to be like me. And the fact I she can look up to me and I can be a role model for her is, is really special. And for each and every single one of the girls here, um, they're absolutely unbelievable um, in terms of what they give to, to young young players and, and young girls, young fans when they come to games. And that's what we want to represent as this team, inspire the next generation and, yeah, inspire a, a generation of kids. Hopefully one day that'll be in our position um, when we're 40, 50, absolutely retired and ready to cheer them on as well. Yeah, a long time yet, Katie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What does it feel like to be a role model? Like when you come into football, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to be a pro footballer. You don't know if you're going to play for Ireland. They're all the hopes and dreams. But now you're literally the, the captain of the Irish team. You are this role model. You see your face everywhere. Do you enjoy all that? Is it is it weird or what's it like for you? Yeah, look, I think at first when it starts to kind of happen, um, you're kind of like, oh, what do you do with this? But ultimately for me, I just try to continue to be the Katie I've always been and um, obviously grow with that in terms of the responsibilities then you take on whether that's being a captain or when you're playing at a really at like a high level at Arsenal and um, week in week out and I just want to be able to use my voice and my platform in a positive way and um, we've got um yeah we've got a massive a massive thing now in women's football where like you said we're becoming role models and I think one thing with with this team it's yeah they take it in their stride and um yeah they the love and the attention they give back to young fans at games is something that we, we never want to have that disconnect. We always want to be connected to the young the young fans. And when you became captain of this Ireland team, the youngest captain ever, did you see yourself as a captain always? Was that in your mind? No, I've never captained uh, any underage teams or anything like that. I've always just been Katie that can have the crack in yeah. play. Um, and yeah, not really have any, any pressure on my shoulders or anything like that. Um, so then to be asked to be the next captain of Ireland, I had to mature pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> but I was yeah very honoured um, that Colin saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Um, and through the support network of the senior girls, like Lou, Fahi Roo, Denise, Diane, um, even still speaking to Emma Bourne to this day, um, I've got a really great support network that um, if I need any advice or guidance, I've, I've got um, yeah, fantastic people around me to, to do that. Has this been your most successful season yet? Obviously everything that happened with Arsenal, like goal of the season, player of the season there as well. 
has it been the most successful one yet or I don't know I don't look look back too much um, I just try to look at okay how can I even get even better going forward and I think that's why you're Kagan McKay <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> to be fair like uh, honestly I, I'm I'm so proud of the, the personal accolades I've, I've received mm-hmm. whether that's at club level but none of them is possible without the the work you, the rest of your team likewise with these group of girls they're so fantastic and um, I'm just incredibly honoured to be able to be leading them to our first World Cup and what does the schedule look like now for the next three it's weeks it's crazy yeah it's pretty crazy um, we've got um, a weekend off after training today and tomorrow um, and then we're straight into prepare for France and that'll be the final send off game before we go to Australia um, and we've got a friendly out there and then it's all focused on Australia. So, um, yeah, I think the weeks are going to fly by. That's what we're speaking about. I like being able to switch off when we can, whether it's getting a coffee, going on a walk together. Um, I've had a few uh, dips at the 40 foot um, nice. as a team. So yeah. um, just trying to enjoy it um, and kind of enjoy being at home together um, in Dublin and, yeah, just preparing for the biggest summer of our lives. Yeah, because it's important to enjoy it all, to take it in, to not let it pass you and think, Wow, did we just do that? <laughs> no, absolutely. Look, we started as young girls playing football mm. for the love of it and we enjoyed it. Um, so I'll be, we've all kind of spoke about it when we get there, just to enjoy it, taking each moment, playing in front of 80,000 fans, opening a, a World Cup against the host nation. You can't say <laughs> you, you'll do that too many times <laughs> in your life, if not ever again. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an incredible moment for us all, but once that... That whistle blows um, on the 20th of July. Um, we'll be fully focused on on um, yeah trying to upset Australia. Brilliant, Kate. Well, we're all behind you. Thanks Very so much. Luck. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Rusha, is it sinking in now? You're going to a World Cup. I sounds like we were talking about this earlier, and I don't think it really is. It probably won't sink in until we're maybe on the plane or maybe the first game. Yeah, I know. And when you heard that you were going, you're in the squad. Tell us a little bit about it. When we were told everyone, what was it like? It was um. It was obviously sad because we then we we'd heard about some of the girls that weren't going, so we were kind of disappointed for them. I don't think there'd be an all nation that was um, sad. Honestly, it was quite it was sad news. But then I think probably the day after, um, the girls would be a bit more cheerier. We're going right. We've made the squad. It's time to then we need to move forward and set a focus on we're going to Australia. So it's like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what was it like to to tell your family? Do you know what? I actually just sent um, the family group chat a text. I just said I'm on the plane. And that's all I said. Um, obviously, then they're all texting, but um, you kind of just wanted to be off your phone for a wee bit and just um, just sort of relax and stay away from the phone. The phone's been hopping since. Obviously, every wishing you wishing you the best and congratulating you. But um, no, it's it's a nice moment. And was it a moment that was maybe a nerve wracking one at times? What was it like for the 24 hours, 48 hours before that, wondering if you'd made it? Yeah. I'm not going to lie, it was a very stressful camp. Uh, the girls, um, myself included, were, couldn't really relax because you just wanted to know where you're going, where you're not. But like, that's the way it is and we knew it was going to be like that. But um, we can sort of celebrate now. Yeah, does it feel like there's a little bit of sense of relief? I know you still have to go to a World Cup, but does it feel like, OK, we're here now, we can breathe and we can just put on our best form? Yeah, definitely. I was just saying uh, yesterday to the girls, I was like, well, I, I've not even made the plane yet. My, my season's been injured non-stop, so I need to not be injured before the plane. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's nice to um, know that we're going there and... Um, I think we can all just set a focus. We've got France coming up soon, so it's going to be a tough game, but great preparation for heading out there. And has there been a moment yet that you've just sort of stopped and thought, wow, look how far I've came? Looking back and maybe the setbacks, as you said, these injuries that you had, different clubs, the, the whole journey that you've had as a player, have you stopped and thought, wow, look where I'm going to a World Cup, this is what I want to I've not, I've not this week, but um, I would say... I think during last season I had the chat with my sister, uh, Shaban, and we'd spoke about that. Um, I think if you look at my career, like we started, I was, I was training like during nights, I was training like three nights, four nights a week, and then the games came so far that you're getting to, it's 11 now, you can make a living out of it, you're, it's your job, and it's amazing, We get to I get to turn up and kick a ball about a football pitch, and it's amazing, it's so nice. Um, it's not been an easy journey, it's been tough, but that's the way football is and everyone's journey is different you know you're going to my journey is going to be a lot different from Denise and Katie's um, everyone's got their own story and it's not always plain sailing but you do it because you love it and you just want to be part of it so and I'm sure there was moments when you started out that you probably thought I can't make a living out of this this is impossible there's not enough opportunities things have changed drastically still work to do but things have definitely changed did you think at, at one point maybe a, a professional footballer isn't what I can do um 
when I was at school, I hated school, and my mum used to be like, you have to go to school, and what do you want to be when you grow up? And I was like, no, it's fine, I'll just play football. And they were like, well, that's you can't do that. I was like, no, I can, it's okay. But obviously I was young and deluded, didn't really have a clue, but uh, the games came so far that it, it did become a possibility. Um, when I was training in the evenings, I always thought it's okay, I'll, I'll play football. And then eventually I, I got to do that, but um, obviously the, the salaries are different throughout the game, but... I still get to make it a job and then I'm looking after football, I'm getting on, I'm 33 next week. But I think there's still an opportunity for me to be around football and work in football and that's exciting, so yeah, it's good. Yeah, you mentioned your family there, obviously Siobhan, we, we all know her well, she's come down off the ball quite a bit. Uh, mm. Yeah, so she's working in the industry as well. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Does she really at all? She doesn't really, like, it's actually a good thing. It's, it's funny though, like her being my sister, I need to be... Um, aware of what I say around her and if I, say, if I say anything I'm like can you not say that please could you keep that quiet so actually you'd be a bit more cautious but um, no it's good to have her in the game um, it's nice and I think when we do stuff together you get to bounce off each other easily so um, it's quite good hopefully we can do a wee bit more going forward now especially when I stop playing I think there's opportunities for us to work a bit more so. yeah oh my god podcast something like that hopefully we, we'd started the podcast ages that. ago but yeah. then uh-huh, um, the two of us were doing our own set of YouTube thing um, but yeah, I think there's there's something there, there's something in the pipeline for sure, so watch this space. Yeah. yeah. I remember uh, during the qualifiers, it was such a, a tough process to qualify for the mm. World Cup, um, and I remember you put up a tweet, uh, I think it was after the Slovakia game, and everybody at home was buzzing, mm-hmm. nobody really knew, are they true or are they not true? Everyone was confused by the whole process. Yeah. And I remember you put up a tweet saying, um, we're eight games in and we're still not qualified. It's a, a, a kick in the Mary to... to <laughs> yeah. And Siobhan replies underneath it and says, you should do inspirational talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's something. I've, I've, I've said a lot of things on um, social media that I can't keep up with, but yeah. I yeah. like to just say it how it is. But even that, it's like nobody had a clue what was going on. No. I didn't have a clue. I was going, are we going to a World Cup? Are we not? Like... It was so confusing, but anyway, we're going now, so uh, going yeah, 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 we're going. Yeah. Tell us about the night in Scotland. Obviously, you weren't playing that night. I got to speak to you afterwards. You could see what it mm, meant, yeah, you know. Yeah. But yeah, and it's obviously being from Scotland. Yeah. Well. Um, honestly, it's the uh, most emotional I've probably been watching a game of football. It was horrible. Um, when you're in the stands, you're kind of a fan, but then you have that attachment to the girls in the squad. I was sitting beside my family and I had to leave them because I just had to watch it myself. So I just stood at a wee stairwell watching it um, when Amber scored I burst out crying and um, when Courtney saved the penalty you were going oh could this be our night we knew Scotland were going to dominate the ball like we knew that um, but we knew we could hopefully get them on the counter and everything just seemed to go right on the night thank god it's been a while so it was nice that um, everything sort of fell into place the girls were outstanding but yeah I'm not going to lie and say I enjoyed it it was absolutely horrible yeah <laughs> and overall then you're really enjoying it obviously you've been able to deal with all these girls with yeah. Katie family are they going out as well to- uh, my dad just texted me last night to say that he's going out now with his brother because they weren't going out so he's gone out and um, my sister will be out there working so it's actually nice that you've got a couple of pe- people out there it's, it's mixed within the squad some people have got loads of people going some haven't got many going but it's so far away so you just you understand why it's too too much to ask for some people to go like my mum I'd love her to be there but She's struggling a bit with arthritis and stuff like that, so you're going that flight's just too long for her. So, yeah. but yeah, it'd be nice to have my dad and my sister there. So, are you happy that you declared for Ireland? I mean, my life would be so different. So, I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm buzzing, but um, no, I'm so proud that I get to represent Ireland, uh, especially my nanny. I think um, before she passed away, she was delighted too that I got to represent Ireland. So, yeah, over the moon. Where's your nanny from? She's actually from Belfast. From Belfast, yeah, Cypress Street, just off Falls Road. Um, and then she went and moved to a wee place called Coney Island, not far from our glass down Patrick. Yeah, I live in Down. No, do you? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, right, okay, yeah. 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 I spent all my, my summers and all that just at Coney oh, Island, okay. jumping into the water. Very That's why good. we're here. We go along to Dunleary and we just go for a swim. So I just float about the ocean. It's great. Oh, I love yeah. it. Brilliant, Rachel. Thanks for your time. No, Best thank you. Cheers.